guys welcome back to Zagami Beauty I'm Krisha it's been a long time since I filmed I feel like so much has happened in a relatively short amount of time and I've been just a uninspired to film beauty products when I've been dealing with a little bit of like real life not as fun stuff like not as you know outlet inspirational stuff i went away on vacation which was fantastic it was the last little bit of freedom we had in alberta because as soon as we got back we were bombarded with so many new mandates and i know most of you are kind of caught in the midst of all of this craziness as well 19 months in we're still dealing with so much craziness and two days before my daughter started kindergarten we got a notice that um masks were going to be mandatory starting even in kindergarten like grade uh, five-year-olds to me again i am absolutely for freedom of choice that is my stance since all of this happened is freedom of choice and i do believe that you know what parents if you want to mask your kids that is your choice i am not going to stand in the way i'm not going to be opposed to what you believe in and what is right for you and your family i for one do not believe that masks work to the extent of what potential risks there are in terms of what they can you know do negatively to our health especially children at the end of the day i don't want to go through the pros and cons i mean that's just something we can all research and empower ourselves and kind of formulate what what we're comfortable with i am not comfortable with children being masked all day at school and so we've been dealing with that with the school and we've we've gotten you know we've gotten through um our choice and that's important lots of parents are in that same boat we feel and they've become empowered we've all empowered each other and and I do feel that we've made some headway when it comes to, you know, um, freedom for our children and, and what's, you know, healthy for them and what we feel is healthy for them. And again, not everyone will feel that, but, you know, some parents do. And I do believe that choice is massive, massive when it comes, when it comes to these things. So that's what we've been dealing with. That's all good. My daughter's enjoying kindergarten and it's been just wonderful to see her be excited about school. And so we're happy with that. And of course, like I said, lots of craziness going on in the world and today I'm just going to try and take a break from that because it is important to just you know disconnect from sometimes reality and I feel that I want to do something fun today and I wanted to film again that's it yada 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 I talk too much I know what are you gonna do anyways we're gonna be going over my thoughts on the Pat McGrath Utopian palette which is a little bit of old news I think for for YouTube nonetheless I want to give you guys my thoughts do a look for you guys I'm gonna do some comparisons I was able to pull the divine rose one and two from my collection we're gonna do some comparisons and it's kind of shocking actually for me anyways one of those palettes is very very similar definitely stay tuned for that you may if you've been on the fence about this palette you may want to wait to see my thoughts at the end I haven't played with it yet this is just based on swatches I just filmed so we're gonna play with this reaching over we're also going to play with this pen this is intensify artistry wand it's sort of like a really glassy glazy consistency nothing too sticky but sticky enough that it's supposed to make the shadows pop extra extra crazy so we're going to be doing that as well trying this out before we get started of course i invite you to subscribe to like this video leave me a comment i love hearing from you guys i've missed you guys so definitely give me a hello just let me know how you guys are doing down below also i'm on instagram at sagami beauty join me there as well for just like everyday content and some more beauty content that doesn't make it to my youtube channel okay that's it let's get straight into this okay so before we get into the look let's just take a quick look at this palette i mean the outer packaging as always it's a work of art just sort of looks i don't know almost like this futuristic but roman influence it's absolutely beautiful there's like spaceships up there i know when this first was sneak peeked or came out people were thinking based on the packaging it was going to be a little bit more rainbow but maybe a little bit of pop of like green would have been welcomed i think by some people i'm not a massive fan of green so i'm not really disappointed with the actual um, palette so inside typical heavy heavy packaging beveled mirror of course as per usual 
super luxe, super heavy. And then we have her typical uh, layout of shades. There's three mattes, some shimmers, and then we have some of the really, really special shades. A duochrome here, which is the one that slightly shifts that almost green, which may be coinciding with a little bit of green in the packaging. Very still pink and purpley. Let's take a look at some swatches of the palette. So a little bit of a close up there, and then swatches top row first, left to right. A very typical champagne shade just to do inner corner brow bone. I really appreciate a very, very shimmery, lighter champagne shade in, in my palette. We have a beautiful crease shade, a slightly matte shade. We have a slightly more shimmery brown shade, a little bit of golden specks, and then the two special shades. That gold seems to constantly be repeated in a lot of her palettes, which was, I think, another critique. I haven't seen any reviews of this palette yet. I don't like to do that before I film. I know in previous palettes, you know, people always say, well, it's too much gold, it's too much gold. I think it's a beautiful topper shade nonetheless. Bottom row, again, we have a little bit of a deeper matte shade, which I think goes well with all of the, the pinks and, and more purpley hues. Um, a very cool shimmery shade, a little more of a topper, but it's sort of slightly shimmery duochrome. I think this would be beautiful just all over the lid with a bit of something in the crease. Uh, then we have that really peachy, vibranty uh, matte shade as well, which is quite a showstopper, I think, in this palette. Then that duochrome shade, Woo! This is creamy. It shifts greeny purple. Kind of reminds me of, is it Club from MAC Cosmetics? Just a lot more smoother, a lot more sheeny. And the final shade is that purpley topper shade that shifts slightly blue. Absolutely stunning palette as per usual. Let's go ahead and do a look with this. Okay, so we're scooched in pretty close. <laughs> Let's go in and do an all over lid shade. Let's take the matte there and just go kind of all over the lid, building slightly, slightly into the crease. I mean, as you can tell, there's no issues blending. This is just easy peasy, like my daughters say. Okay, let's build up the crease. I do want to use this peachy pink shade and just sort of build it up. I'm using a Marc Jacobs crease brush. It's a little bit more pointy. And then we can just slightly build it up, just, you know, on the edge, slightly into the crease. That is gorgeous. And again, no blending issues. Her palettes are very consistent in terms of quality. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is the color stories. I think people wanted something a little bit less pink this time around, especially with, um, you know, all the Divine Rose collections that have been coming out. But so far, you guys, I'm really digging this. Like this peachy pink is just, wow. Absolutely stunning. I just like to pull it in underneath, sweep it out, extend on the outside too, especially with a nice pointy crease brush. You can really just kind of slightly extend it. I have round eyes, so I do like to kind of extend the shadow out just a little bit there. So freaking pretty. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, I kind of want to use this shade here, just sort of like all over the lid. It's a nice topper shade, but then do we want to use something really crazy? I'm going to use that first, and then what I think I'm going to use is this um, blue shade after. Let's use our fingers there for that shade. You can almost just even leave it at that, just sort of line your eyes, and you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead now use that peach shade to just highlight my brow bone just a little bit. Again, I love having a champagne shade like that. I feel like it's so versatile. You can again use it on the inner corner, which we will at the end. You can use it just on that little eyeball part, just to kind of bring out extra bit of light, especially with a look like this. You could just put a little bit of that and it'll just kind of make your eyes pop a little bit. First, I'm gonna put that purple shade, oh, there we go, just on the lid without the wand, just to see how that looks. I mean, that alone already is so pretty. And now let's put a little bit of that wand. It's a clicker, so you just have to keep clicking quite a bit just to kind of get it going. She does apply it directly on the eyeball. You can probably always just take a little bit on your finger and dab it, which I think is what I'm gonna end up doing. But again, you can probably just, yeah, and it's not really shifting too much. Let's go in with that same purple shade and see what happens. It is more vibrant. I think I can agree with that. I feel like her shadows in general are just amazing pigmentation wise, but yeah, I would say it's a bit more vibrant. I do like the effect. I want to top now 
all of this with this crazy topper shade there. Oh! Wow, okay. Oh, wow. Like this now, I can see the artwork reflected um, from, from these shadows. So pretty. I am so in love. Let's do inner corner with, again, that first shimmer shade. Let's do the lower lash line, so probably a combination of this peachy peach and the first crease shade. Take a bit of each on the brush. I do feel like I need to line my eyes, so I'm going to take the darkest shade there. I really like that, you guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward the rest of my makeup, put some nice music, and do it on camera, and then I'll meet you guys um, at the end. love this palette I am so so taken by it I feel like the look it, it's just so ethereal it's so pretty it's almost fairy like I feel that it's really really easy to get a cohesive look with a little bit of something extra fun happening on this end I will be reaching for this a lot now I did some comparison swatches with the Divine Rose 2 I actually I'll show you guys a side by side first with the Divine Rose one. That one I don't feel like there are a ton of similarities with it, so I didn't bother doing any, you know, comparison swatches. I feel like they're good standalone separate type palettes. Now the Divine Rose two is a little bit of a different story. Side by side, there are some similarities, a little bit similar in intensity overall in terms of the pigmentation or depth of the shades. The Divine Rose two I feel is slightly darker than the Hutopian. Swatch wise, I picked a few shades from the Hutopian on the top of my hand and then just on the bottom row there's some similar shades from the Divine Rose 2 and as you can see they're quite similar the ones I chose those shades alone are quite similar the other four maybe that I didn't swatch have obviously slight more differences but if you have the Divine Rose 2 well you may want to think about waiting for the Hutopian if you don't want to dish out you know regular pricing for it it probably will go on sale which is a nice thing with Pat McGrath as soon as she brings out something new, I feel like the previous release goes into the category of her, you know, friends and family sales, which are usually 25% off, and she does them quite often. If I had to choose now, if I didn't have the Divine Rose 2, I would much more prefer the Hutopian. I feel like it's a little bit more wearable, a little bit more pretty, ethereal, fairy-like. It's just something I would reach for more so because the colors are just that tad bit lighter. Now, if you have darker skin, if you feel like you want more pigmentation, more punch, um, maybe go Divine Rose 2. I feel like that one is just a little bit more pigmented, um, a little bit darker. So while they're not exactly the same, of course, I think they are quite similar and something to consider if, you, again, you don't want to dish out the 170 Canadian 
that these palettes are. In terms of the pen, the Intensifies pen, it's good, it does the job, I just don't think it's anything crazy must have. I feel like if you wanted to use a little bit of MAC Fix Plus for those special shades, you could definitely gain that extra bit of like intense pigmentation. So. Okay guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below, have you played with this palette yet, are you on the fence? Let me know how you like this look today, or even just say hi, I love hearing from all of you, I've missed you. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys go today. I will see you in my next one. All the best. Ciao. Bye